Okay, so we're gonna go over the specifics on the different uh, pollinator plants here. And usually when you think of pollinator plants, you think of milkweed and monarchs and what have you, but we're focusing on um, native bees and other um, butterfly species native to South Florida. So my two host plants, my larval host plants here are uh, the passion flower, which is in the back, which is pretty munched on. I've got some beetles that are doing a number on it at the moment. Um, but this is a quirky stem passion flower. So you'll notice at the base, that's how it gets the name corky stem, because the stem really does look like cork. Um, my other larval host plant here is a kunti, which is a native cycad, uh, sometimes called arrowroot. Um, so these are the host plants for um, Atalus. They were endangered, and now their populations have kind of come up in numbers over the past few years because of butterfly gardeners like ourselves. Uh, this is a female kunti, and you can tell that by the shape of the cone here. So I'd like to have a male kunti to start producing viable seed, but that's for another day. Um, so the quirky stem is a host plant for your julias, your uh, zebra longwings, and your gulf fritillaries. This one tends to be a little bit more shaded in the afternoon, so I've noticed that this one attracts more of the zebra longwings than the gulf fritillaries, but um, that's just based off of personal experience. So my other, my other plants here are, uh, for the most part, just Florida-friendly um, nectar plants. So that's where your pollinators are gonna go and get nectar or uh, sugar for them to have energy to um, fly around as adults, find a mate, and then turn around and lay eggs on your larval host plants. So I'm gonna start from left to right. So these guys here in the front, these are bulbine, and um, you can find them in a garden center pretty readily. They can probably be classified as succulents. They have leaves similar, with like a similar goo on the inside to aloe vera but uh, you'll find them in yellow and orange, and uh, the bees really, really are attracted to these guys. Uh, they look really nice planted in mass, so these guys will clump together and form like a nice lush cover. So these plants here are blue salvia, or sage. Um, these I've seen attract um, butterflies and bees alike. There's a bunch of different types of salvias, um, I just chose this for its blue color. Um, we do have a native uh, sage. It's a tropical sage. It tends to be bright red. Sometimes you can find it in pink or white also. Um, so these guys back here, these are coleus. This uh, particular variety, I believe, stays pretty short, so like a foot or less. And the lime green color is pretty nice, but you'll notice that um, they will flower. So they'll, they'll produce um, some flowers here if you don't deadhead them, and those will attract bees. Um, so most of these plants that I've shown you thus far are not native. I do have some native plants. Um, this guy here, he's kind of small right now, but he's going to grow up and he'll be a beautiful yellow top. Uh, that's a native um, yellow flowering plant. These to the right are pentas, so uh, for the most part you'll get butterflies on these guys. Um, I tend to mix and match colors on these. Uh, I had Valentine's Day in mind, so hence the reds and pinks going on here. Um, these usually will get about three feet tall, It'll be really nice mounding, mounding plants. Um, so right next to my kunti, I have another native plant. This is um, bloodberry. So this is gonna be a bigger shrub. Eventually I'll probably have to remove these pentas here. But these uh, produce white flowers that uh, when they're pollinated, they produce red fruit, hence the name bloodberry. And uh, like I said, the atalas, they tend to be attracted to that. At least that's what I've seen at my workplace. 
Um, so these up front here are um, tick seed or coreopsis, which uh, the whole uh, genus coreopsis is the state flower. So uh, these I don't think are native per se. Uh, They're probably an ornamental uh, hybrid variety. Um, I believe, I could be wrong, that this is Coreopsis grandiflora. So these produce super showy, um, kind of daisy-like flowers, and uh, these are perennial. They stay kind of nice and clumping for the most part, but you may want to deadhead these or save the seed and uh, spread them to other parts of your garden or um, share them with your friends. And those will attract both bees and butterflies. And last but not least, these plants up front, these are uh, purple Mexican heathers, and um, these tend to attract um, mostly bees from my experience, and uh, I've, seen, I've seen them come in purple, but some garden centers I've seen them with uh, yellow and white, not sure if it's the same species, but super close, and they attract bees just the same. So all in all, this is my small pollinator garden. I'll have to do videos on my other sections of my landscape, but um, just wanted to show you that you can have a pollinator garden in a small space. Uh, you can include both Florida friendly and native plants together and still have a nice full garden. Um, just make sure you have your larval host plants, your nectar plants, and uh, have your uh, perennials in the back, your annuals to swap out as need be in the front so they're easier to access. And uh, yeah, um, a lot of this you can get at a local garden center. It's pretty easy to maintain as long as you make sure that you have it on a timer with irrigation or you water by hand at least two or three times a week until the plants get established. And uh, your mulch is gonna help you out here too. It's gonna be your your buddy and keeping weeds down so that way you don't have to use any um, any pesticides. That's that's another big one. Make sure not to use uh, pesticides in your um, pollinator garden. I know a lot of plants from big box garden centers. They'll use um, neonics or other systemic insecticides. So if you do have larval host plants. Um, the ones I've seen for the most part are your um, milkweed from these stores. Maybe keep them quarantined for a few weeks to get those neonics out of the system of the plants and uh, that way when you do have your caterpillars um, feeding on them you don't risk your little guys uh, dying unfortunately. So most of these plants I don't think we're gonna have any issues with that. I don't use any pesticide so um, yeah, this is my uh, backyard garden. Hope you enjoyed.